Okay, I'm going to carry on. Um, what I've done is I've, I was going to lower this a bit so that I could actually um, reach it a little bit better. But I'm just standing on my yoga mat. <laughs> what I do is with my yoga mat, it's, I've, I fold it over so it's nice and padded. It's lovely to stand on. And um, just makes it more comfortable if you're standing for longer than half an hour. Uh, you really need good footwear on, really, so you can keep relaxed and not worry about how your feet are feeling. You're concentrating on your drawing. Um, so, sorry I'm getting a bit close to the camera, but um, I just wanted to tell you that it's really important to feel comfortable when you're drawing. Otherwise, um, you just make it harder for yourself, really. And my yoga mat, I fold it into about four. So it's it's about, I suppose it's about that thick and then it's padded so I'm up I'm up about an inch and a half now and it's enough I have not needed to take it off I can now reach this much better up here and so I'll be able to carry on um, and do this next bit what I'm doing with this is because it's furry on the edge anyway it doesn't need a hard line on this um, just there is it's kind of going in there but it's hardly anything really. And yes, this this is the kind of thing that needs to be carefully done. Get this line exactly right. It's going in about here. Yeah, it's going in about here. You can just put a little mark in there, that's enough. to keep the fluffy area because we've got we picked the grey paper that grey matches in quite well with this fur and um, you don't need to put a you know the, the black will help it I'm sorry about this board moving just really I do need need a new easel definitely Um, well, when I first started drawing, I've had this, so I must have had this, oh no, I must have had this 14 years, um, and I had no idea whether I was going to draw very long or not, so I don't want to spend a lot of money on an easel, although it wasn't a cheap, cheap, cheap one, I've got a cheap, cheap one for travelling with, you know, when I go, go away and go to my mum's and oh my god. It's a nightmare to work with. How they ever sell any of those, I don't know. They're horrible, really horrible. It's, oh, somebody very kindly, who was an, um, an engineer, he, he altered it for me at the, at the art group, and now I can use it. But before, it, it just wasn't usable. It was just terrible. It was moving about all over the place. Wouldn't stay up on, this, on a hard floor sliding around all over the place. I had to put wet um, bits of tissue paper under, under the legs so it would actually stay up. We just wanted to slide down. Anyway, he, he did a lot of different things to it and gave it stability as well as um, stopping that sliding habit that it had. Uh, Yes, it was cheap. It was only about I don't know, thirty pounds or something. But instead of travelling, so I just thought, well, that's going to be perfect. I'll, I'll just take it back and forth because I needed it here to take to art groups. You see, I needed it to take to art groups as well as when I was going back to to my mum's. And I do have to go back there quite a bit actually. And when I go back, I stay for quite a while, maybe a week or so. I'm going to try and keep these little hairs here. Not 
back. Make them nice and thin. You can make them nice and thinner, even thinner with the back, with the back round them. So I'm using the side of the pencil now. And this helps keep the, the point sharp as well. You just keep turning it round, you're kind of sharpening it up in a way on the paper. So yeah, I'm tipped over this bit now. What I did there was I actually made this look like a hair that I've drawn in, but it's actually the paper underneath it. I've just used that as a base, that tiny little hair coming out there. And I've made, made a longer hair just by leaving the paper. So it looks grey, but it, 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 it will stand a bit of colour over that. Probably, probably white. If you didn't want to do this, if you've already put whiskers in and you want to try a background, you could just go over it and put the hairs in again. It'll be alright. The hairs will go over it. But um, I don't mind doing stuff like this. I quite enjoy it. So, you know, for me, this isn't a hardship. It's a, it's a pleasure. Uh, so, yeah. So this, we've got a little squared off bit here. So I want to get that in. Can just emphasize it a little bit. Yeah. What I'm noticing now is there's, although this is yellow, it look, it's looking kind of against this green background, this dark grey green background. It's actually looking a little bit orange on the ends too. It's incredible, isn't it? The, 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 the more you look, the more you see. And that's the same as anything really. Same as when you go out and you look at nature. You can just look at it and look at it and you'll see more and more. See how the black's just gone over that pale yellow line? Just do it over here as well. Just goes right over it, see? He's filling in a bit more. It's like doing a picture on the cutty sock, moving about so much. Being on a boat. Still. Use 
Okay. Lucky to have a board. Lucky to have a nice room to do it in. Nice quiet room. Very fortunate. That's not dirt, that's pastel. I just wanted you to know that. Good to know. I've seen that this needs more on before I actually rub it in with my finger uh, because the sun has come out and I can see that it wasn't very intense here. I could see through it a bit. I couldn't see that before in the lower light. The light's really important. Right, now we've got this coming around like that and then this is this is sloping in a bit more there, isn't it? He looks like Top Cat at the moment. Remember Top Cat, the, the cartoon, I used to love that. American cartoon called Top Cat. And he had these really big cheeks that came out in the point. Very good, very good cartoon drawing it was. Just like that. I've probably said before, I've been always been mad about cats. And of course, as a kid, I used to love watching that. rub it all in at the end I'll just get a lot of pestle on and then we'll do it at the end because uh, my fingers really will look dirty after that okay so what I'm going to do with this is again because it's furry we're just going to give it a nice sort of kind of softer softer line around that you know you could actually use a bit of the grey paper to give it a softness I think I might need to move this down a bit or upside down. Try doing it upside down. I just like to you know something about just keeping the whole thing in the picture. It's nice. It's, 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 I, I just used to that. I like it. You just do it how you feel you want to do it how it's going to work best for you because um, you're the one that's doing it so you do it how it's going to work best for you but you can see that it's given it a, a nice impact it's made the cat come out up front a bit it's given it a dimensional three-dimensional look which is really what you want when you're doing lifelike things even if it's a clearly a drawing and it's not exactly like a photo, all these little things really, they do help to make it look more lifelike. Uh, now, what we're going to do is instead of taking a picture of our I'll just use some of my um, glassing and be very careful, just give it a wipe over. As I said to you before, with this paper, you don't have to be extremely careful about smudging it because it doesn't smudge like other papers, you know, the pestle, it doesn't smudge. It does. 
you know, it will, it, you, you won't want to really leave it on and having it moving around. You, you know, ideally you won't want that, but um, it does, it does stay quite firm. Firmly, and then you can then lean on this this way then. Right, so these these bits here um, you need to be you know just very go very gently around them. Because it's fluffy, just, just do it like this, I think that's probably the best way. Keep an eye on your picture, because I did put a bit of detail into these fluffy bits that will be nice to keep, but if you lose them it doesn't matter, you can do it again. Just go over it and around it. Turn the pencil around a bit on its side. When I've done this little bit here, I'm going to check the camera and just make sure that you can still see what I'm doing. I think you can, but I'm going to make sure. I'll have a look in my camera. I forgot to mention I, I've shaved a bit of the pencil off the wood. I'm going to take a bit more of it actually because we're getting close down a bit. It won't take a minute. Got my little scalpel tool out now. Just make sure that wood's off. Otherwise I won't be able to use the pencil on its side. check the picture yeah yeah you can still see see what I'm doing there you don't go over this bit here it's going up here and you don't want to lose that because that's in I, I know I went on about it quite a bit at the beginning and it really is important just make it a little bit fluffy Still want that line coming through there, which we can put in there now again. Make sure that that's correct. By doing this, you'll keep your, your little fluffy look, and you can do it easily on this because it's dark paper. You won't, if you've missed any bits, it, it won't matter. Right, this goes in a bit here. I've got kind of and it goes up. 
and a wedge. And in again. And another wedge. And then that's actually a bit shorter. Her hair coming up there, so I'm going to leave that bit out there in the paper. back a bit and check it. Come up to pressing on, on his eyes. Although what that will do is it will just press the pastel into the paper more. But I've, I've put quite a bit of um, effort into those eyes and they're looking just right. So, But I always check everything at the end. You know, as you probably notice, I go over and over things. If, as I notice them, I think, oh yeah, I missed that, I'll do that. And I just do it. That's what I do. And we can go on and on doing that actually. But you've got to be careful because it can easily look overworked. As I've said before, it can easily look unfresh, uh, too perfect. You know, do, do you really want your picture looking too perfect? Um, I don't, but personally I don't, I don't want to do that kind of stuff anymore, you know, that's how I started out, and it can be achieved, but as I've said many times, I, I do repeat myself a lot, I know, but it, it's very tedious, it's very boring, you know, it's like a job of work, to try and get every flipping hair in the right place, who's got the time? Um, as I've got older, I've become more and more aware of this. That I want to produce pictures that have a bit of expression about them and, uh, you know, that I'm happy with. Uh, but I, I don't want to spend months doing a picture. I haven't got time. There's, there's too many pictures I want to have a go at. Um, Uh, you, know, you just never know what's around the corner. You don't know what's going to happen. Whether you can, whether you'll be able to do it next week or not. You just don't know. So, just got to get on with it and get cracking. Get as much done as you can. 
And I do spend a lot of time drawing, but I don't draw every hour of the day. I've got, you know, if I've got a life to, to keep going. I can't stand here and draw every hour of the day. I'd love to. Um, but probably wouldn't do my body any good. And, you know, you need to get out in the fresh air too. You need to get out in the light. You can't spend all your time in, inside drawing. Everything's got to be in balance. And you can enjoy everything more then. Everything's in balance. Everything is more, everything's more enjoyable. Going out is more enjoyable. Staying in, drawing is very enjoyable. Um, but if you do something all the time, you just take it for granted and it doesn't have such an impact. If you love something so much and then you have to walk away from it and you can't wait to get back to it, that's lovely. That's great. You know, too much of anything isn't, isn't good. We all need a bit of variety in life. Variety is the spice of life. Now you can see how that blue is really showing up there now. Really good, really pleased with that. Now, I just want to make sure I've got a nice point on there for the. So I'm going to go around his um, hairy ears now. Nice point on here. So once you've got the wood taken away, it's just a simple matter of the, the sandpaper and getting it all under your nails. Like that. Oops, looks horrible, I know. Just wipe it on the trousers. That's the way to do it. I've got trousers on that will take it at the moment. They're not white. I always keep my pictures when I finished a picture. I always keep the best print and I always keep the tracing paper as well. So that if I want to do another one, um, I've got there, I've got a guide there to remind me of the procedure. I'm just going to wipe this. I might want to put this on again, I don't know. Just leave that there for a sec. I need it. This is quite a nice round. It's got rounded cheeks. See where that comes there again. Just use the line on the end of the pencil. Just want to see where that comes. Yeah, it's just 
See his nose is just popping out over the top of the pencil. So that's where we need to be. We've got use our line again there. And so, yeah, that's where it is. It, it's, it needs to come down here. cross over that so you get every bit of paper, not right on the edge of his fur, can leave that bitty and we'll go over, we'll go over this with a, just look at that, that's, that's kind of straight there, it's going up in a little straight bit, kind of like, like that, sort of straight and then it comes around, it comes in and around actually, you can see. It's only coming in because of the hair. envisaged. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to use my paper. So I can lean 